Hi, my name is Eric Kwiatkowski, and today we're going to be talking about power combined rectenna arrays for X-band wireless power transfer. I'm speaking on behalf of the University of Colorado at Boulder and the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C. So to provide some uh, overview, basically we're going to first talk about some motivation and background for wireless power transfer. Um, we're going to discuss rectifier characterization, uh, the formulation and development of DC power patterns, and also discuss measured rectenna performance of a rectenna that was fabricated uh, for the purpose of this, this paper. So for some mot motivation, um, space to earth wireless power transfer it enables on tap energy access for uh, remote locations or energy starved locations. So, if we're looking at the cartoon on you know, here, um, this is basically representative of uh, you have some, some transmitter in space in low Earth orbit and it's beaming power at 10 gigahertz to this receiving rectenna array um, here, which is you know arbitrarily floating in the ocean somewhere. Um, and you know, for, for all these applications related to energy harvesting wireless power transfer, the goal is to develop efficient RF to DC energy conversion techniques or designs, uh, especially for low instant power densities. And most work that's been performed so far, uh, primarily at 2.45 and 5.8 gigahertz down to roughly one microwatt per square centimeter. And there are very few results at X-band for even lower power densities. And from that, the specifications for this work are presented here. So the power density is going uh, on the order of three orders of magnitude, so 0 0.1 to 100 microwatts per square centimeter at a frequency of 10 gigahertz, and the instant wave is left-hand circularly polarized. So first we performed a diode characterization. Um, here we used a, a Skyworks SMS7630 Schottky barrier diode, and we performed a source pull from minus 30 to zero dBm. Uh, which is the expected instant power uh, from some, you know, sort of some napping calculations that we did before. Um, and you can see here on the left, we have our source pool set up. Um, we are not using the, the PNA in this instance, it happens to be there. Um, but the block diagram can be shown on the bottom left here. And on the right side, over here, we are showing uh, an, ex an example output of a load pool script that was de developed in the house. And this is at zero dBm instant power and an arbitrary DC load of five kilo ohms. And here you can see, uh, these are essentially, it's, uh, it's showing the imaginary and real components of your reflection coefficient. Um, and the highest order of magnitude that we're getting here is roughly 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 uh, for gamma. And here you can see, you know, we're taking measurements all around the Smith chart, several hundred measurements and impedances, and we're plotting output voltage, output power, uh, power at the diode plane, and here we're able to calculate this from a doing a TRL cal, and also RF to DC conversion efficiency, which is the you know, the driving metric here. And you can see from this this heat map, essentially the yellow region is the area with the highest efficiency. So after this, we we designed and characterized a rectifier, uh, which is you know essentially consisted of uh, designing a matching network. Um, for the impedance we found, which is nine plus J13 ohms. So it's uh, low resistance, slightly inductive impedance. And the board that we developed is shown here, unpopulated. The input comes on the right side with the Southwest connector, give a DC blocking capacitor. And then from here we have our uh, Schottky diode. And then up here we are having a, a shunt capacitor and DC load. And this large block here is just a, um, spot to solder a banana jack to connect a multimeter to. And as you can see on the plot to the left, um, our measured DC conversion, our RF to DC conversion efficiency is shown in blue and it tracks very closely with the expected source pole results, which were uh, are plotted in this dashed orange line here. And you're seeing, you know, at zero dBm, you're seeing efficiencies up to 40% roughly. And for higher power levels, um, if we're looking at the plot on the right, this is showing conversion efficiency as a function of DC load at various power levels. And you're seeing for high power levels, such as zero dBm, uh, the ideal load is roughly 700 ohms. And then as you, you know, decrease your instant power level, you're, it's approaching roughly two kilo ohms or more. 
Um, and you know, if you want to combine these two plots, if you take this plot on the right and rotate it so it's pointing into the page, say at zero dBm, we take this trace and rotate it into the page, uh, that is what these blue dots are representing. So it's uh, efficiency measured for various DC loads. Next, um, we're showing the, the circularly polarized antenna subarray. So we decided to use a sequentially fed um, array feed for single diode rectifier. And the benefits here are we're getting uh, this inherent scalability and RF combining, a power combining aspect. Um, so, you know, inherently you have this, these four elements that are power combining to a single diode, uh, which is therefore increasing your conversion efficiency at low power levels. And another benefit is it provides circular polarization and low axial ratio, albeit narrow band. That's okay for our application. We're working strictly at 10 gigahertz. And the phasing of each patch, um, it's for, for our design, we did 0 and 90 degrees uh, offset phasing, but typically it's 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees, depending on the feed location of your, uh, your the location of your feed in your patch. So moving forward, we have some, some questions to answer. And one of those is, you know, what is the best array size for uh, maximizing your DC output power? And is there a way we can, that we can methodically you know, determine this optimal array structure for a given application? And something else um, that we didn't particularly co cover for this paper, but are looking into is, uh, what are the effects of shared or individual DC loading for each rectifier if we have many rectifiers or many rectennas? And you know, from here, we can go through this process where trying to model or predict the best array size and structure. Um, first, we develop a polynomial model for the, the rectifier diode efficiency as a function of input power. So here you're seeing um, the, basically it's a, you know, the same metric performance that we had before in a previous slide. And then the orange line is a model, the polynomial model that we developed, which is a seventh order polynomial. Um, represented by this expression here. And for step two, um, we're, we're looking to apply array theory to a, a given subarray. And as we showed before, our given subarray is a two by two um, structure of patch elements with a sequential feed. So from this, you know, for an example, we're taking a two by two planar array. So we take the subarray and make it a two by two planar array with lambda spacing between the centers of each subarray, sub we are able to, you know, you have this, um, you can utilize equation, array theory equations to develop your array factor directivity. And, you know, we have the simulated subarray gain with maximum gain of roughly 10 dB. And if we add these two in this case, um, you can estimate your array gain, your, you know, ever any given, you know, any given point in space. You can see there's a maximum, maximum gain of roughly 18.6 dB for this given array that we're, you know, we're trying. From that, you know, we have gain. So for step three, we have gain. We can therefore calculate effective aperture, effective area. And knowing the instant power density, we can determine the received power, received instant power at the you know, plane of the diode, assuming a lossless speed. And you know, these, these maps are basically showing the instant power for two different power densities. One is one milliwatt per square meter or one watt per square meter. And you know, going from that to step four, um, we can map, you know, we have this, this mapping of, of instant RF power. Um, if we then apply that back to our efficiency model of a rectifier, we can determine the efficiency that we'd expect in space, a given point in space. And this is representative of you know the transmitter being at a point a given point in space, um, about you know, relative to this this rectenna. And you can see here for low power densities, we're getting you know, the model is showing roughly one percent efficiency, and as high as you know around fifty seven or sixty percent efficiency at high instant power densities. For step five, um, you know since you know your efficiency and your instant RF power, you can then determine your DC output power from the rectenna. And this is you know, similar to, to the previous step, step four, and it's showing the expected power levels or DC output powers that we can get um, for different power densities. And you know, from this, we're able to you know, compare different array types for 
from the perspective of this spatially defined DC power pattern. It's what we're referring to these patterns on the left as. And from that, we're, we're mapping diode nonlinearities to antenna patterns. And it's for the purpose of energy harvesting or wireless power transfer applications, such as this work here. And you know, a conclusion you can make is there's, uh, if you're continuously having your main lobe track the trajectory of a satellite, you can have a significant increase in your DC output power compared to having the static main lobe um, at the expense of you know, requiring energy to actually track you know, the, the transmitter. And the plot on the right is just another representation of the polar plots on the left. You can see here, um, keep in mind the orders of magnitude of the efficiency. You can see for a given elevation what conversion efficiency you could expect. Um, and these bounds are basically showing um, it's incorporating any given azimuth angle for a given elevation angle here. And that's for why you have a sh shaded region here for a given elevation. So from that, we wanted to, to validate a subarray design and take some measurements. And so first we, we validated the subarray without the matching network for gain and input match over frequency. And that's on the left here. You can see at 10 gigahertz, which is our design frequency, we have gain of roughly 10 dB. And we have a, um, a return loss exceeding 10 dB over a one gigahertz bandwidth, roughly. And on the right, we added the matching network and developed the subarray rectenna shown here in the top left. And we measured R to DC conversion efficiency for varying DC loads, uh, which is, you know, it's a plot that you saw earlier in uh, one of the earlier slides. And we're getting efficiency as high as uh, roughly 16 to 17% for 120 microwatts per square centimeter. And, you know, roughly 2% for four microwatts per square centimeter. And here we're defining efficiency as the ratio of DC up power over the instant power density multiplied by your effective, your effective aperture at per outside. Then, you know, moving forward, we wanted to scale this up to kind of demonstrate our array theory that we discussed earlier. So we took a subarray and we made it into a two by two array shown here on the right. So instead of being four elements, it's now 16 elements. You can see here, there's essentially four unit cells that are combined to a single diode, single rectifier, single matching network. And here on the left, you're seeing that there's, for, for the array, there's a benefit in both conversion efficiency and rectified DC output power relative to that of the unit cell. So the array here, the uh, output power and efficiency are shown by solid lines and our unit cell is shown by dashed lines. You can see that the two by two array shows increased conversion efficiency um, over that of the subarray for all pow instant power densities. Additionally, our maximum efficiency is approaching 20% at the high end of our instant power density of 100 microwatts per square centimeter, as opposed to the 15 to 16% for the unit cell. And then additionally, we are showing um, this plot here, which is com comparing the array versus the unit cell for a given uh, you know, angle of instance at the, at the array and unit cell. And it's showing that there's a, you know, this clear benefit of power combining the broadside instance with the array. So if we're comparing similar colors, um, the orange to the orange and blue to the blue, you see this inherent benefit for using the array in terms of DC output power. Um, that said, there is a, a narrower beam width for the array compared to the subarray you know, with lower rectified output power at larger angles of instance. So if we're showing, you know, the array at 30 degrees off the right side compared to the array or the unit cell at 30 degrees off the right side, you can see there's, there's not much benefit for the array, but you have this, this inherent benefit in power combining at broadside instance. And this has applications, as we said before, to energy harvesting from, from a satellite tracking perspective. And you know, there's this inherent benefit to tracking the satellite trajectory at broadside from the perspective of DC power combining. So to conclude, we developed this theoretical framework that um, was used for maximizing rectified power in power combined rectenna arrays. And here we demonstrated the highest efficiency rectenna performance at X-band for low power densities, and we were able to achieve rectification as low as one microwatt per square centimeter. 
Additionally, we demonstrated this inherent efficiency improvement using sequential feeding for circularly polarized rectennas, and we're able to maintain a low axial ratio for this design. So here I provided several sources I cited throughout the presentation, and I ask you if you have any questions to feel free to contact me at the following email here, eric.kwikowski at colorado.edu. I appreciate your time, and I thank you for listening to this.